woman. Take your position, 14. Thank you, Batwoman. You have your instructions, Neon. Carry them out. Neon, you idiotic fool! What do you think you're doing? You, you must have switched the, the, the glasses, Batwoman. I, I, I only wanted to show you how wonderful they are. I only wanted to make you happy. That's where you made your mistake. Vampires, werewolves, ghouls, every kind of monster you could ever imagine. I am Sador of the Mount Mori. I have come with my forces to conquer you. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, the B-Movie Cinema Show. I'm your host, Mr. Hyde. And I'm your host, Horror Chick. We're here to talk about all things horror, from classic movies to new releases. And we're especially fond of classic horror movies. That's right. And we love the old-fashioned scares, the supernatural plots, and the iconic characters that go along with yeah, and we're here to share our love of classic horror movies with you. So whether you're a fan of Bella Lugosi or Boris Karloff, Vincent Price, or Christopher Lee, we've got something for you. So join us each week as we explore the dark and twisted world of classic horror movies. And prepare to be scared. Mm-hmm. So this week's film is Vampirella from 1996. Uh, it was an American direct-to-video superhero film, which was part of Roger Corman Presents series. It was based on the Vampirella comic book, one of my favorite horror comic books of all time. Um, it was directed by Jim Wynorski, who said in 2013 that it was one of it was one film that he regretted making. 
Um, quote, I can look back on it today and just say, oh, well, but back when the memories were fresh and the blood was still on the floor waiting to dry, it was painful to even edit, he said. Uh, quote, what went wrong? Wrong choice for the star, massive union problems in Vegas, studio interference, theft, accidents, 112 degree Fahrenheit heat. You name it, we had it happen. But at least I got to see Soupy Sales perform. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm not sure. I know why Hammer had planned on doing a Vampirella movie with uh, Caroline Monroe. Oh, she would have been good. Uh, that was what they were one of their last productions, and then it fell through and it didn't really happen. And they kind of folded after that. So I'm not really sure exactly what happened there. But, but anyways, the, the plot of this one is 30 centuries ago on this planet, Draculon, lies a civilized empire society that drinks synthetic blood, which flows through the rivers across the planet. Their society's harmony is interrupted when Vlad Tempish. A rebel vampire who prefers the traditional practice of sucking blood from their others, along with his accomplices, murder, murderers and members of the Council of Elders who govern Draculon and then flee to Earth in order to create a race of vampires with their own ideals. Among the murdered elders was the father of Ella, who, with a desire for revenge, decides to follow Vlad's trail to Earth where she becomes Vampirella. Mm. Yes, and the cast is Telsa Soto, which we'll get into later on with her casting, because apparently it was quite um, quite interesting. Um, plays Vampirella. Dar Roger Daltrey from The Who plays Vlad Fish. <laughs> and, um, and a few other actors that we really don't know. So yeah, this is the movie. I'm hoping you guys enjoy the movie. <laughs> it's, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone's going to have fun with this one in the chat. Oh, definitely. I am really looking forward to the chat with this one. All right. That's it, everybody. Hope you enjoy the movie. And um, we'll see you when it's over. Don't forget your popcorn. the way we vampires used to behave in ages long past. Our ancestors would drain each other of blood instead of drinking it from Draculon's organic rivers and streams. How barbaric. Yes, Vlad has slaughtered hundreds, perhaps thousands. It's no wonder I'm under pressure to resurrect the death penalty. I pray it won't come to that. Do you truly, Ella? Of course, Father. We're civilized people. We're not monsters like Vlad and his cult. Ella, I've raised you well, stepdaughter. But the council isn't so forgiving. And in the case of this Vlad, I can't say I blame them. What's that for? For being the wisest man at Draculon, and the fairest. I'll see you at mid-break. On your feet, lad. Council's ready for you. Relax, gentlemen.
generations, we vampires have lived in harmony with nature, sustained by rivers brimming in rich, warm blood, our sacred sustenance. But always among us, there are wicked aberrations, savages such as you, lad. Not content with the plenty our civilization provides, you turn on your brother, feasting on his life force to increase your strength and prolong your years. Before I pronounce final judgment, is there anything you wish to say to this tribunal? Speak louder than words. Demos, tracks, well done. What kind of entertainment, Vlad? They dared to judge you, the fools. We've sealed off the Astroport. The ship is ready and waiting. No! Wait! But hurry! You were an honorable man, sir. Please, allow me the pleasure of letting you die dishonorably. Remember me as you rot in hell. This way. Third one from the sun. Primitive planet. It will serve our needs rather well.
Hey, partner. Adam Van Helsing, the prodigal son, returns. Hey, you look healthy. Nice tan. Mate. Tan? It's that damn clearance beam in the elevator. How'd it go in Chinatown? A false alarm. Another schizophrenic with delusional fantasies. Better than a new outbreak, though. This is no delusion. Carlos in Brazil is up to something. Turf war? Classic. <laughs> Ramirez says that, uh... Carlos is about to do something stupid any time now. Sounds like Carlos. Stay on top of it. Well, further news. Check this out. Concluding its historic mission to Mars with a picture-perfect touchdown just three and a half hours ago. The entire crew and shuttle are doing just fine, or should I say A-OK, -okay, after the most ambitious exploration of the Red Planet ever attempted. Walsh, I read the paper. Well, and no sooner had the craft landed, and this highly controversial photograph began circulating throughout the media. That. What's that flying out of the shuttle's open doorway? A smudge, a defect in the film, or perhaps a stowaway Martian who hitched a ride back to our planet? That's what some UFO experts are speculating ever since they saw the picture. Tell me I'm dreaming. Vampires from space. Look, in three years I've been assigned to this special unit. I've seen some weird shit. Well, maybe I need a vacation. Maybe I'm seeing bats in my sleep. But I've got to smudge. I'm Peter Pan. You're joking me! That's usually the general idea, asshole. How the hell do you expect me to do my graphics with this piece of crap, huh? What's the matter with you, huh? Things held sacred. Crap. Waste matter discharged from animal bowels. A popular slang for an extreme negative. You're speaking colloquial English. More or less. Go on, get out of here! Get help! Leave the boy alone. You don't want to mess with us, Miss TNA. Would you like someone to drink? I mean, something to drink. Sorry about that. Ackerman. Miss? Can you imagine what it's like to fall asleep? And when you wake up, it isn't the following morning, or even later in the week. It's an eternity. 30 centuries separate me from everything I ever knew or loved. Sounds horrible. It is. Who did this to you? I did what was necessary. They had to be followed, tracked down. No matter how high the price, I was prepared to pay it. Understand? Sure. Well, no. All of them. Vlad, Demos, Trax. Trax? Professor Arnold Trax. Well, he's like the foremost debunker of supernatural phenomena in the country. Well, uh, California, anyways. See, exposing phony supernatural claims is a hobby of his. Do you have a photo of this man? Oh, I, I can do better than that. Come on, take a look. It's like the commercials say. It's a database you can sink your teeth into. I mean, computers are the best tool a researcher ever had. I know. 
I scanned all the history disks on the shuttle coming down here. That's how I learned your language. Uh-huh. Oh, here we go. Professor Arnold Trax, Berkeley. Night courses only. Author of the bestsellers Making Sense of the Supernatural and Vampirism, The Fallacy Exposed. This him? Yes. In a place called Berkeley. Whoa, wait a second! Well, you can't go around like that. Why not? <laughs> That's why not. Do you have any idea how, how gorgeous you are? <laughs> Here, put this on. Now, tell me, when you find this guy, Professor Trax, what are you gonna do to him? Kill him, of course. <laughs> of course. Look, do me a favor. When the cops catch up with you, leave my name out of this. Thank you. Thank you. You've been extremely helpful, Eggman. And I truly appreciate it. Right. Good luck. Oh, I almost forgot something. planet kingpins have been on top for a very long time maybe too long you got fat and you got careless so a young bud like me sees his chance and he takes it i grab what i can grab nothing wrong with that is there you did the same thing as me when you was young fortunately for you i am a reasonable man since you come to see me today to uh, hear my side as you say I assume that you, too, wish to be reasonable. You got balls, Carlos. I'll give you that. But you also have one tragic flaw. You don't respect your elders. <laughs> I see. Oh, <laughs> you don't see. I've watched punks like you come and go for hundreds of years. Hungry little bloodsuckers with their eyes too big for their heads. I was here before your great, great, great grandparents were here. It was my people who gave birth to you wretches. <laughs> and this is how you repay us. My friend, you are one sick son of a bitch. Really, you need help. And I got news for you. None of the Big 12 really believes that outer space bullshit of yours anyway. <laughs> you and that other psycho, Vlad, may be running things now. But you're no better than the rest of us. So why don't we just cut through it and get back down to business? Hmm. Good idea. Business-like enough for you, Carlos? Take him in the back. driver on the inside. Chacon, you take him down. You guys follow me. Go. Beautiful. 
mind having one of these in my living room. <laughs> to hell with you, Demas! To hell with you! Carlos, where is the fun in that? I smell something burning. Everybody freeze! Well, well, well. What have we got here? It's Demos, Vlad's number one boy, out in the daytime in a sunsuit. Very trendy. Hi, honey. <laughs> nah, pretty much business as usual. I'm gonna be getting my things together and leaving in a few minutes. You want me to pick up anything at Super Saver? <laughs> okay, fine. I'll see you in a little bit. I love you, sweetheart. Who are you? An avenging angel. A fragment of your sinful youth, Professor Trex. My stepfather was the high elder of Dracula. You and your people murdered him. I'm sorry. Truly sorry. Then tell me where Vlad is. I don't know. I swear I don't. Vlad and I lost touch with each other ages ago. That's the truth. Your family? My current family, yes. Maybe I'll let them live. Then again. Maybe I won't.
fuck, Demos? I'll tell you exactly nothing. Listen, Demos, we've been at this half the night. We know a lot about Vlad, and what we don't know is his current identity and location. What we do know is that within the next week, he's planning something huge. <laughs> yes, Vlad's planning something. He's always up to something if I were mortal. Oh, boy, I'd be really scared. Normally, this organization abhors torture and violence. But we are talking about our lives here. What are you going to do? What's in the needle, Van Helsing? Holy water. Blessed by the Pope himself. Unless you tell me who Vlad is and where Vlad is, I'm going to have to inject you with it. You ever see one of you bloodsuckers shot up with holy water, eh, Demos? You know what happens to your son? You're going to turn into putrid jelly in 60 itty bitty seconds. We'll have to use a mop to get you off the floor. You don't have the balls. And besides, without me, you have nothing. All right, but well, we got Carlos, and he knows a thing or two. Carlos doesn't know shit. Not the shit you want to know. Nothing. That is a chance we're going to have to take. Now, I'm going to count to five. One. Two. Three. Four. No? Then you leave me no choice. May God have mercy on your soul. All right, all right, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. God damn it, get the needle out of my arm. Talk! Get the goddamn needle out of my arm, man! Who is Blah? Uh. Who is Blah? Uh. God damn it, his name is Jamie Blood. Where's he operating at? Come on, son. Uh. Where is he operating? Vegas, he's in Vegas! Mind if I join you? I was counting on it. You've hit me like a ray of moonlight, Raven Hair. Where have you been all my life? I'm looking for you. Well, 
Now that you found me, you're gonna bleed for me. So what do you call yourself? Vampirella. Vampirella? Yeah, yeah. I like it. But you're not really a vampire, are you? You never can tell, Mr. Blood. Mr. Blood? Come on. That's what the suits call me. My friends call me Jamie. Now, let's split this pin. He just left. He's got some babe with him dressed up hot. Meet us in the parking lot and prepare to pursue. Affirmative. It's all in how you look at things, Raven Hair. This place it inspires me. My city, Raven Hair. Beautiful, isn't she? Come here. Problem. No problem. <laughs> Don't tell me you're a good girl. No. Not anymore. Then let's make the next one really count. You know what our weapons can do. Operation Purge. Am I right? Good work. So you're the son of Conrad Van Helsing. Now there was a legend for you. Too bad he's no longer with us. Of course, you all know how he died. Extend your arms. In front! That'll keep you in human form for a while. You think because I can't change into a bat that you can hold me? No. Not until you're dead and your ashes have been thoroughly vaporized will you be truly helpless. Even then, I wouldn't trust you. Cover her and put her in my transport. Sir, the woman isn't dead. She's only unconscious. Cuff her and put her in the van. Already done. Interrogate her when she comes to. I'll stop in periodically. His Majesty comes with me. Yes, sir. You mean she isn't one of yours? In the van. I owe the lady an apology. Van Helsing runs off with the real prize, and then sticks us with some run-of-the-mill vampire whore. Where are you taking me? Where's Vlad? Shut up. We'll ask the questions, bitch. And when we do, you better have answers. Explain something to me, Adam. You don't mind if I call you Adam. You know how old I am. You know how powerful I am. <laughs> Let's face it, compared with you people, I am a god! Do you really think you can hold me? It's all a matter of faith and confidence, Vlad. 
I have both. Really? Then tell me something, Adam. Does that compensate for having murdered your own father? No more talk. But I've already told you. Vlad is also my enemy. I lured him out of the club in order to destroy him. So you're on our side, is that it? Who are you kidding? Ever see the concentration pit back at headquarters? Mm -hmm. They save it for the most uncooperative captured specimens. I got a hunch. This one's for the pit. That ought to be some show. <laughs> Why don't you head on up front? I want to interrogate our little lady friend here in private. Just you, Raven Hair. I thought you were working with this. I've never seen him before. Allow me the pleasure. You are much stronger than I am. At the risk of sounding egotistical, I am stronger than anyone. Now, where was I? Ah. This is rather sad in a way. In another reality, I could have called you friend. In any reality, I call you scum. This is really going to hurt. I've come a long way for this, Vlad. Tonight you pay. Just who do you think you're talking to? Dracula, bitch! I am Vlad! Dracula Eternal! The most powerful vampire on this! Or any other planet! You will not destroy me, Ravenhair! I will engulf you, body and soul, in my own time. Vampirella, help me. No, oh, I'm fine. It's uh, <laughs> nothing serious. Uh, we lost a few good men tonight, Walsh. Yeah, I know, I know. No, I don't agree. Matter of fact, we may have gained something significant tonight. Yeah, I'll let you know in the morning. Yes. I will try to get some sleep. Okay. Good night, Walsh. Your superior? My partner. Partner in crime. Tell me about Operation Purge, Van Helsing. Purge is a covert paramilitary uniform by my late father. 
protect our race from a race of bloodthirsty creatures capable of some pretty astonishing things. We believe innocent people have rights. What about my rights? My rights as a rational being. Is that what you are? <sighs> this is what I am. And this is who I am. One and the same. A vampire? Yes. And of course we're bloodthirsty. That's what we live on. Well, you live on other people. No. Only on this planet is vampirism a mockery of itself. That's Vlad's doing. My stepfather's people were noble. They'd sooner die than taste innocent blood. And you? What keeps you alive? Vengeance. And something I was told in another life. A dream is realized, daughter. A serum substitute. For blood? A high-quality synthetic nutrient. Our scientists developed it to serve the drought-stricken southern provinces. I've microsized a lifetime supply and attached it to this armband. Thank you, Mother. I know that you don't approve, but this journey is something that I have to do. I know. As hard as it is for me to lose both of you, I agree with your decision. This is the real you. Not some bookish schoolgirl trying to measure up to your father's ideals. But a woman of action. You will see. I followed Vlad halfway across the galaxy to your star system. But my shuttle ran afoul of an iron cloud before reaching Earth. I was forced to land on the orb you call Mars. It would be my home for the next 30 centuries. Finally, less than a week ago, explorers from the third planet, your planet, set foot upon the fourth. Searching for signs of life, they entered a cave where I'd placed myself in a deep sleep. They carried my life support system into their ship and began the long voyage home. We got a 4.4 deviation on the return trajectory. Roger. Motion detectors revived me, and I rose from a trance-like rest. Did you hear that? No. You didn't hear that? No. Did you ever see It, the Terror from Beyond Space? No. Why? Could be our passenger. Let's hope so. I hypnotized the crew, making them completely forget about their discovery. When the shuttle landed, I changed into a bat and flew away. The rest, you know. Vlad. Dracula. You're saying he's an extraterrestrial. He took the name from his native world when he lived as a count in your Carpathian mountains. Vampirism itself. Comes from the stars. Vlad murdered my stepfather. He desecrated and perverted everything the High Elder stood for. Everything. I'm sorry. I understand how you're feeling, believe me. 
But whatever your feelings are about Purge, you have to admit one thing. We are committed to destroying Vlad, maybe as much as you. Are you suggesting we work together? Maybe I am. Consider the advantages. Vlad is up to something major, we think apocalyptic. All of humanity may be threatened. You forget. I was born a vampire. I won't betray my own people. If they're his disciples, they can't be your people. from Vlad yet? Negative. Mr. Russo and Mr. Rice just confirmed their arrival for tomorrow night. That accounts for all the Big 12. Vlad will be pleased. I'll call you when I need you, Quinn. Let's just say it's been a difficult night. Tell me. To begin with, my cover is blown. Jamie Blood rocks no more. Who betrayed you? Demos. Who else? And Helsing's stormtroopers must have forced it out of him. If they have Demos, maybe we should delay our plans for Judgment Night. We have waited too long for this night. We will just get him back. That's all. <laughs> A raid on Purge? <laughs> yes. That would be nice. But I was thinking of something more on the line of an exchange. to meet Lieutenant Owen Walsh, co-director, Purge Operations. And Helsing here is uh, very important to us. Thanks for saving his life. Sit down. So, uh, Adam tells me you're an E.T. That's right. Vlad's an alien, too. And Demos. But when they entered Earth's atmosphere 30 centuries ago, conditions in space were very different. We verified that with Caltech this morning. Something in your atmosphere caused irreversible metabolic changes in them. They mutated into what I call pseudo-vampires. Their bite infects rather than kills, transforming their victims into one of them. And along with that comes the inability to endure daylight. These are not Draculonian traits. What about the reaction to that? 
Icons of Christianity have no effect on normal draconians, as you can see. <laughs> well, subtlety has never been my long suit. You could ask. Hey, excuse that. me, Lieutenant. Um, you wanted to check this over before we began preliminary testing? I'll catch you later, Professor. Right. Wait a minute. What? Isn't that the sun gun? Uh, sure is. Charge, Dan. Ready to sizzle. I wanted Vampirella to see that. It's a new high-intensity assault weapon we've been developing. But hey, it's your baby, Professor. You go ahead. Uh, right. Well, generally speaking, it's a refinement of the clearance beam principle, the application of artificial sunlight. It recharges itself automatically. It's the ideal field weapon. May I? Sure. It's a prototype, of course. The only one we've assembled, but it is fully functional. It's pretty much the idea. Tell me, Steinman, what exactly does this thing do to your victims? Oh, it, it, it emits a piercing beam of solarite, which literally burns through the skin and, and bores right through the internal organs. Hmm. Sounds painful. Harmless to humans, of course. Of course. I, uh, promised our guest a guided tour. See you later, partner. What was that all about? Trouble. It wasn't until the feds came into the picture that Purge became a vital state-of-the-art defense unit. We recruited from all over, especially law enforcement. Guys like Walsh made the transition much better than expected. He's very suspicious, isn't he? Well, in his line, he has to be. State gun. Purge operative's best friend. Right down to the 9 millimeter silver tip wooden stake. Demos! Medtechs can get inside. You bang on it all you want. This stuff is as tough as steel. Oh, excuse me for a minute. You know, I think you're out of your mind. I don't give a damn who knows it. Oh, come on, Owen. We've disagreed before. I believe her. You don't. You're damn right I don't. Mutated virus from another galaxy. She's a genetic freak engineered by Vlad to spy on us. No, she isn't. To seduce you. No. Oh, what? Analyze this. Vampro says there's enough artificial blood in that one vial to feed a whole city of vampires. Food for thought, huh? Adam, son. Slow. But your father's gone, and you're the last of the Van Helsings. We can't afford to lose you, too. Vampirella, if you've seen enough of Operation Purge, I can take you back to the hotel. Thank you. Of course he didn't trust you. It wouldn't be Walsh if he did. Hey. Why? Very nice. I sketched it this morning. It's Draculon. Paradise Lost. Not entirely. Adam, last night you said you understood what I was feeling. What did you mean by that? Well, like your father. My father was a victim of Vlad's. I'm so sorry. How did Vlad... He didn't. 
You know how my family has battled vampirism for generations. Vlad thought it would be the height of irony if he transformed my father into one of his own. He did. And so with my father's eyes looking into mine... Do it, son. His hands clenching my hands, I... Do it. ...plunged a stake through his heart. What you did was an act of love and courage. I may be nuts for saying this, but things are moving a little too fast. Adam, hmm. the door will always be open for you. I better get going. Hi, Adam. What's hot? <laughs> Kidnapped! Right out of his apartment. Lad's people called this morning. They want to swap Adam and Demos. You are going to do it. No, you're going to do it. More of their instructions. They want the operative, Vampirella, to deliver the goods personally. I'm gonna hand it to you, you and Vlad. Adam didn't stand a chance. You're wrong. Am I? Well, I'm fed up with your lies. You can take this, whatever it is, and choke on it. Walsh, don't be a fool. All right. I'm turning Demos over to your custody. We're gonna do this thing by the numbers. And I swear to God, if anything happens to Adam, anything at all, there's nowhere in this world you can hide. Wait for us here. Different kind of graveyard. Move. <laughs> oh, you come a long way, baby. Tell me, you plan on killing all of us? Me, Vlad, Sala, Trax? You can scratch Trax off the list. What? Just shut up. Good evening. Adam? It's me. I'm all right. I'm not hurt. You must be Vampirella. Got a message for you from Vlad. He'd like to see you again. He wants me to invite you to go back with us. He gives his word that you won't be harmed or detained in any way. In case you want to leave. It's very reassuring. Well, thank you. I'll pass your compliments on to Vlad when I see him. <laughs> now let's get down to business. Ben Helsing. I'll see you next time, beautiful. through the past couple of days. Adam, you okay? Yeah, it's nothing serious. Just my ego's been hurt. I thought I'd never see you again. I'm kill Van Helsing. No, wait, wait. Where's the real Adam Van Helsing? Safely under lock and key. And don't get so holier than thou with us. According to this little gizmo, you got a miniature homing device in your armband. Walsh, you son of a bitch! Purge gunman right there! Hands in the air! Everybody!
sir. We nailed two of them. Three got away, including Vampirella. She could be airborne, following them directly to Vlad. So what if she is? Adam believed in her. You think I was wrong, don't you? You think I should have told her about the homing device? What else do I think, Lieutenant? We're running out of time. We may have a global nightmare on our hands unless we can locate and neutralize Vlad's nerve center. She veered off when we got here. She's somewhere in the compound. I know it's her. It's all right, Quinn. But if she knows our location, then she's going to tell the per... <laughs> she will not make the mistake of trusting Purge twice. She'll come for me. It's in her nature. Now, go and make sure General Demos is comfortable. Yes, sir. My strong right arm. Back at last. All in one piece. No stake through the heart. No. But, uh... They tortured me, Vlad. Those turds biotechs can be such sadistic sons of bitches. But you stood up to them, didn't you? You didn't crack, did you? Not Vlad's strong right arm. Danger! No! No, hell no. But they tried to, to break me, as I said, but they could not. Salah. Vlad, I'm sorry. They asked me for that. I had to give it to them. You can see that. Enough of your excuses. This is the eve of war, General Demos. The Big Twelve await our briefing. Yeah. Sure, Vlad, whatever, whatever you say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. My esteemed guests, men of extraordinary power and vision, Men who I love as a father loves his own children. I welcome you to this table. Chairman Vlad, speaking for all of us, it is the greatest of honor to be here with you tonight at the dawn of a new era. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Thank to you judgment right. night, gentlemen. Now to business. This war that you support but know nothing about will begin in less than 24 hours. General Demos is our central link to vampire colonies and armies around the world. While Salah, dear Salah, is in charge of base operations. And I, I play a very special role in tomorrow's epic drama. Gentlemen, there are 10 of these Draculonian satellites orbiting the planet, each one cloaked by a screen of bioreflective plasma. For several years, we have used them to scan planetary events and advance our own interests. But tomorrow night, gentlemen, these satellites will yield the greatest of their services. At my command, each satellite focusing on a different portion of this planet will irradiate that portion with a unique carbon-based particle beam. These beams will have the same effect on the Earth's atmosphere as a limited nuclear winter. 
blocking out all sunlight for a significant period of time. During that time, gentlemen, we will have the advantage over our enemy for the first time in this planet's history. Inside a church in close to 40 years. Funny. Considering how many times a cross has saved my life while on duty. Lord, it's hard for me to ask for help. is up to something big. Please, God, give us a hand. Don't let this planet go to the devil. This cult is weird, man. Up all night, sleep all day. What's your gripe, man? Gig's a gig. Each walking out at the supermarket. That's all I know. Hey, uh, hey. <clears throat> Jose, Jose. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Raven Air. I know how much you wanted to kill me. What have you done with Adam Van Helsing? I invited you here to discuss your future with us. As the last pure Draculonian, you belong with the New World Order. You have no future. She's too dangerous, Vlad. Kill her. No. Take her to the young doctor. Maybe he will find a way to change her mind. Adam! Don't worry. He's alive. Just not even in condition anymore. You bastards. Speaking of lineage, tell us a little about yourself, Vampirella. Or is it Ella, stepdaughter of the High Elder? Actually, it's neither. She's a barbarian infant in the Kulai Wastelands, a region not far from my own. What are you saying? That we're related somehow? Even more than that. Our immortal souls are the same. I sensed it the first time we met. So did you. No! Move again and I'll blow the doctor's face off. You'll become terribly thirsty in the next few hours. Without this or fresh blood. Will die before midnight. Fresh blood, Vampirella. Nothing artificial. Straight from the source. Vlad, don't do this. Forgive me, Vampirella. It's the only way I can be absolutely sure that you are one of us. I'll send for you when it's time. Bon appetit.
Electrical storm coming up. Our fault. Transmission feedback is disrupting the atmosphere. Creating the proper atmosphere, more like it. Perfect for tonight. Now, start the countdown. No! Wait. I'll do it. So the world changes hands. Van Helsing and his people will never know what hit them. Carry on. Now, a good day's sleep before our hour of triumph. <laughs> Lieutenant, we just received a message to your attention. Read it to me. By the time you read this, I will have had my crack at Vlad. If I succeed and he is destroyed, we can all rejoice. But if I fail, only Purge under your command can stop him. It'll be your show, Walsh. Good luck. It's signed E.T. There's an address in Nevada. I'll be damned. Get Fisher on the phone, then get back to my office ASAP. You're what? going with me this time, Bob. What? Thank you, Lord. I owe you one. Yes. Vampirella. Adam, take oh. it easy. You've been hurt. What happened? Where are we? We're trapped in one of blood cells. And it's judgment night. Well, what's he planning to do with us? Well, to begin with, he wants you drained of every last drop of blood. Well, there's no surprise there. No, but he wants me to do the honors. He took my serum pack. And without nourishment, after a 24-hour cycle. I revert. I completely lose control. Even now, I can hear the blood pumping through your veins. I can smell it. I can taste it. I hope this is strong enough to hold me. Varela, you'll die after 24 hours if you haven't been refreshed with blood. At least I'll die a friend. Do it. Dangerous. Some things are worth any danger. Center, gentlemen. 
This is Kobe. <clears throat> Mr. Nakamichi, this is General Demos. He's all in readiness. Affirmative, General. Please tell Vlad we await his final instruction. Excellent. Demos out. You see, gentlemen, it's the same. Everywhere in the world, they wait on Vlad's command. Then, it's goodbye, humanity. You will feel the lonely and the joy. When you give me what I Listen to me. You have to have blood or you'll die. Drink. Just enough to stay alive. You won't ask me why I keep you full. You won't need your old friends anymore. Come on, please. Follow me. Come on to me. Come on to me. Please. It won't be long now. With us, the master wishes to see you. Did I miss something? It won't be out for long. Come on. Sir, trucks approaching from the northeast. I knew it. I'll get your people ready. problem out here handle it send in the troops if you have to don't bother me here Quinn yeah You look a sight. Vampirella. She's doing what she came here to do. After 30 centuries, she's finally gonna nail Vlad. Oh no. Cool.
Hey, the tour left to help me. Ah. You were right, Father. Vengeance drove me to this distant planet. But something even stronger holds me here. Although Vlad is dead, his children of the night live on. Perhaps in time, they will renounce his legacy of hate and learn to live in harmony with the humans of this world. Perhaps it's my destiny to show them the way. we're back and hopefully you guys enjoyed that um fun and exciting movie and, <laughs> um with, with this new format um what we do is we come back and we've made some notes and we're going to talk about our notes and um so give a rating everybody of one to ten what you guys think of this one and um so uh what did you think of the movie <laughs> Um, I actually had fun with it. It was, it was a howler. It's a howler, but I have to admit, I actually enjoyed sort of just watching it and getting through the whole thing. And, and it was just fun. It was just a hoot. Um, you can't, you cannot and will not ever take it seriously. Um, it's really bad. You know, it, it's, it's obvious why this went like direct direct from uh i think like direct to home video or whatever mm -hmm. you know it, it didn't come out in the theaters um massive swing and a miss for for the subject i mean that 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 subject of vampirella the character deserves an appropriately cast uh and and much much better uh movie all the way around and, uh, I've got I've got some other you know notes that I've made, but um, what what were your what were your initial 
thoughts on it. Well, if this came out uh, as a soft porn movie, it probably would have done a hell of a lot better. Because it was right? kind of like a borderline wacky uh, soft porn parody almost. Yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, there were a couple of porn stars that were in the movie briefly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't miss them. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Talisa Sado. Mm -hmm. a fantastic body you know she she is a sexy woman but she Beautiful. sucked as vampirella she oh, was yeah. she would drag that movie down <laughs> she was horrible yeah she was like um i i heard one reviewer you know refer to it as wooden and that that's the best way to describe it in my notes i've just got oh my god the acting <laughs> <laughs> she if that's wood <laughs> yeah I yeah i mean it might be an insult to wood but um she was just terribly miscast i mean nothing against her as a person absolutely gorgeous lady um obviously went on to do uh you know be one of the bond girls uh rightly you know quite rightly so so i haven't seen her anything else she's done so i don't know if her acting improved <laughs> um or if they just didn't didn't give her a lot of lines to do, but she's a very, what's the word? She's, she's like very monotone. She didn't have any passion to the delivery of the lines and may, whether that's how she was directed, I don't know, but. Well, even the director, um, Jim Wynarski, he, uh, his main concern was the casting of Talisa Sato saying she's very pretty and she's very sexy, but she was not a vampirella. They forced no. me to use her. Um, she didn't have the body for the costume. And no. um, he would have had Julia Strain, but they didn't think Julia Strain meant anything. So they went with somebody else in the role. Um, Huge mistake. Yeah. A big, big mistake. I mean, uh, Roger Leah, or Roger Leah, uh, film rights passed to Roger Corman and Jim Wernerski. Um, and Wojnarowski also wanted Paula Abdul in the role. Now, Paula Abdul probably would have done a hell of a lot better job than uh, Talisa, but it's still a bad choice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a fun movie. Um, Roger Daltrey was, was campy and a lot of fun. You could tell he had a lot of fun with the role as well. Oh, he did. And one of the things I commented on in my notes was I just got Daltrey was camping it up and it's like Flash Gordon meets Buck Rogers. Um, and the other thing that I mentioned, Darren watched it with me as well. And I said, how much better would he have been as the master in the Doctor Who movie? Because mm -hmm. he had the same, he, he was camping it up like Eric Roberts did, but there's something about Daltrey. He's just, He's really, really good, even though it was a complete, campy, crazy performance. He really, like, steals the movie. Mm -hmm. It's probably not that hard to do, but there you go. <laughs> and he, he's believable as well. Yeah. Um, when he went, he went a little darker sometimes and a little more serious. And you, you actually, you, you could get into that character. And, and mm -hmm. like you said, he would have done a really good master, much better than um, the, Eric uh, Roberts. Yeah, in my in my opinion, I, I but I that's my own personal opinion. I mean, I wasn't like a huge fan of the the sort of over camped, you know, Flash Gordon esque master that he he um, he he gave us. Um, I think Daltrey could have played it a lot darker. And, and still been incredibly um, compelling and interesting as a character. So, yeah, it would have been cool to see Daltrey in that role. Definitely. Um, Brian Bloom, who played the character Demos, he's actually mm -hmm. um, a really big voice artist. He's done a lot of work um, behind the scenes using his voice. Was he the guy with like the eyebrows and the piercing eyes? Yes. Yes, yeah. I thought that was him. Yeah, he he's definitely done other acting because I his face mm -hmm. is like 
unforgettable. He's just got one of those very unusual, exotic looking faces. And he wrote the screenplay to the A Team movie in 2010. Did he? Mm -hmm. And Karina Harney, who played Sala, you know, the girl with the uh, the curly hair. Yeah. That was on the bad. She was um, 1991 Playmate of the Month and in 1992 Playmate of the Year. Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> This whole movie was like a roll call, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it, it would have been better as a soft porn movie than, uh, than what it was. was well, it would movie. have been more honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> and another something else that struck me too was, you know, the tribunal part with Vlad. Mm. And they're all sitting around and, uh, and they're all going to give their verdict. All I could picture was the Superman movie. You know when those heads show up, they're like guilty. <laughs> yes, yes. See, that's what that's what I was picturing. Yeah. The the thing I had in my notes as well is the scene where Vlad kills is it her grandfather? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um the the what I wrote down about that scene was, you know, he says to her, Don't try to avenge this act of madness. And I've just got which immediately translates to definitely avenge this act of <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> file that one under obvious um and what was going on with the music again with like <laughs> it was like they had this weird music for the van helsing character mm -hmm. um it was it was just like this almost like I don't know. It it had like nothing to do with the tone of what the movie you expected yeah. the movie to be. It was just it was just like this weird elevator Joel, music or something. I was like, what the hell is that? Joel Goldsmith did the uh the score for this one. And he must have been on some pretty good drugs when he was doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Normally his and stuff it, is really good, but whew, this one was, was Yeah, it just it just it was just in terms of matching it to like the the movie, it just seemed way, it just seemed weird. And the the Van Helsing character as well, the actor that played him, was about on par with Talisa Soto's woodenness, woodenness you know, in, yeah. in his performance as well. They, they were just like so unemotional. Oh my god! Yeah, in the song that Roger Daltrey sang, I'm glad that didn't make it to any Who albums because. <laughs> That would not have made any uh, any awards. No, but it was cool to see him actually singing in it. I thought, okay, yeah, they 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 didn't miss that opportunity. Um, there was also a scene where they're looking at a picture of uh, that was taken of the, I guess it was like the like a space a spacecraft or something that had landed back on earth and it's like a it's like a bat flying out of the the space oh, yeah yeah and that yeah. <laughs> and i cop i mentioned the quote it that cracked me up one of the characters says if that's a smudge i'm peter pan <laughs> there was a couple funny one-liners um i wrote down a couple too he said i will engulf your body and soul but in my own time. <laughs> that was kind of a well, it would have been a short movie then. So right away. And then after 30 centuries, he's finally got to nail Vlad. <laughs> I know. It's like, really? Um, and her opening lines, I mean, seriously, I couldn't believe the opening lines they gave her. She repeats back holy and crap and she just almost like Ar like she's trying to a bit like arnie delivered his lines in terminator which were in in character for what he was supposed to be delivering he was he was you know a cyborg 
<laughs> so you're expecting him to deliver these lines very flatly, but the way she delivered her lines, and of course the line they gave her to say about crap, I was like, really? Where she goes <laughs> on to describe what it is, and I was just like, okay. In the scene where, you know, the nerd that helps her gives her that jacket. Yeah. And then she, she turns around and she goes, oh, and I forgot something. And she gives him a smack on the mouth. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Is that yeah. she's around and kissing everybody that she runs into? Because it's never shown that she does in the movie, right? Yeah, it's weird. It was very weird. It was very exactly. weird. It was like, it was trying to appeal to... um to like a certain demographic maybe and you know and who who would want to see a scene like that but it, it nothing fit in this movie nothing like there was no, there's no like continuity or anything and i i put a comment on my notes that says it's like a vampire version of kill bill but like a really knockdown version <laughs> <laughs> um and did you see john landis John Landis was, uh, yeah, I was going to say there was a couple special appearances. There was John Landis and the um, Forrest J. Ackerman had a small role in this one, too. You no like way. It, Yeah. How did I miss him? Yeah. So, yeah. That's really cool. Um, and you know the scene where Daltrey suddenly just unclips this very obviously fake hair? Yes, yeah. like he's suddenly supposed to be looking very different after he, <laughs> he just kind of clips it very dramatically, and I'm like, really? Yeah, he, clips it, he clips it like he's had enough of this piece of shit. He's like, get <laughs> this thing off of me. <laughs> oh my of god! Thing. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I I picked up on, I did a little digging afterwards because we did get talking about the the fact that Roger Daltrey would have made a great master in the Doctor Who movie. Well, apparently he was, um, according to um, Google, he was considered for a number of guest roles in the original 1963 Doctor Who series and in the 80s. No, he was, I take that back. He was considered for a number of guest roles in the 1980s in Doctor Who and Classic Who. Um, Perhaps most notably, Shara's Jack and Peter Davison's final story, The Caves of Androzani. Mm -hmm. And uh, David Bowie was also considered for the same role. Mm -hmm. And then um, Daltrey actually did act with Peter Davison in something called The Last Detective in 2003. So, and the impression I got was that Daltrey actually was quite keen to be in Doctor Who at some point. So it is kind of weird because... This movie was made around the same time, I think, as the Doctor Who movie. So mm -hmm. I wonder what happened there. I wonder if, had he already agreed to do this one, maybe, and couldn't get out of it? Or yeah, probably. it's weird. I'd love to know if he was ever considered for the Doctor Who movie for any, you know, for any of the roles. And, um, and if, or if he, you know, was offered and turned it down or what? I don't know. But I couldn't see him turning that down, though, if he was offered, because it did. You do get the impression that he he was quite keen to be in it in yeah. some some in some form or fashion. You just think how much different the role of Cheris Jack would have been if Roger Daltrey or David Boy had played it. Mm. I'd have to go back and rewatch Caves um, because I haven't seen that in a while, but. It would have. It is interesting to sort of imagine what the character would have been like as him. I, I, I was, you know, I was impressed with the way Daltrey sort of turns his hand to acting, as well as you know being, you know, an amazing musician. You know, it's just, it's you don't see that very often. So it was kind of cool to see him, you know, sinking his teeth into this one, as it were. Mm -hmm. Um. The Vampire Film Project had been in development for a number of years for Hammer Films. Oh, yeah. And it was originally going to be filmed in 1976 with actresses such as Karen Lynn, Carolyn Monroe or Valerie Leon uh, being considered for um, Vampirella. Peter Cushing was also cast in the role as Pendragon. 
mm. as well as Orson Welles and Don Pleasance in other roles. The film uh, was not made due to James Warren's refusal to relinquish merchandising rights. Yep. Monroe and Hammer actress Julie Matheson were featured in twenty the twenty in a twenty nineteen film version of Vampirella, starring Monroe's daughter in the title role. Really, um, Hammer came close to making the film again in nineteen seventy eight with Barbara Lee. Um, Christopher Raking wrote the score or wrote the script, and John Ho was to direct. The film was going to be uh, co production with American International Pictures. But the head of production, um, Samuel Z. R. Knopf, decided not to make the film. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's just kind of been doomed. Which um, is a shame because it's got so much potential. And the way this movie ends, too, it sort of leaves it open. It does. Horror. And there was a, um, a sequel that was planned. Um. It yeah. was going to be called Dark Avenger of Death. However, it was never due, maybe because they didn't want to have um, Delisa Salto's wooden acting again. That's the problem. Uh, it would have been a hard sell to switch actresses, um, or maybe not, <laughs> depending upon right. how you look at it. Or if um, they went ahead and did a soft, quote, frost, soft porn version of it, probably would have done a lot better. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it, it, this movie just seemed like, um, they, they just, they had absolutely no idea what they were doing. And I, and I, I think I had read something that was it the director that he can't even watch it. He can't even go back and watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I think he had to do some, I think he had to watch it for, um, some DVD extra stuff or something like that. But um, I, it sounds like it also was really fraught. The production was really fraught with a lot of issues. It was like a, over a hundred degree Fahrenheit heat. Mm -hmm. um, there were thefts on the set. There were um, quite a few different problems that they had. So it just seems like it's really technically been a cursed enterprise to try to to try to make and it because I mean I grew up reading the Vampirella comic I mean I absolutely love Frank Frazetta who did the artwork for um, quite a few of the Vampirella covers and things and that's where I was first introduced to his his art as well and um, I, it just made me a fan instantly but the 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 magnetism of the character of Vampirella just deserves so much more than what it was, you know, what it was given. And um, the actress is so key with this. And I fear that if they made it today, they would try and, you know, detract from her femininity, if you know what I mean, um, perhaps. But you, you, without a doubt, you need a voluptuous, very, very tall, very striking actress to play this role. And the funny thing is, Talisa Soto's face, if you just look at her face and her hair, she actually had a good, she was okay. Like her face wasn't bad and her hair kind of worked. Yeah. But, <laughs> but her her physique, she was she was very small boned. And so yeah. that that just the character is very statuesque is is almost like um you know the original characters she just needs to be very very tall very leggy very you know mm -hmm. so it, i think they would have had a very a fairly small pool of actresses to choose from to play that they could also carry it off in the acting department as well as have the right look um the costuming obviously back then you know, it was very, it actually looked more 80s than 90s, you know? Um, but like if it was made today, I mean, they could do a lot with the costuming um, and even perhaps some CGI to, to really bring it to life in the manner in which it was originally drawn. 
So yeah, I to me, I'd be really picky because I absolutely loved that comic book growing up. So I'm like, mm -hmm, me too. You know, the thing is, is there an actress today who would be able to carry that role? Hmm. I'd have to sit and think about that. And first one that pops into my head is Gal Gadot. Yeah. Yeah, because she did pull off the Wonder Woman in, in the the first one that I saw. I haven't seen the other ones that she's done, but I didn't see Wonder Woman 84. But I did see the very first one she did. And to be fair, she does have the right um, height and intensity. Um, right. so yeah, so she could have been. Yeah, she definitely could have been a possibility. But would it be made in the style of Vampirella, or would they change the costume and be like dress pants or something like that? Right. That's She's what I would. Today. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I would expect if it was made today. I I can't imagine that they would um, allow it to be shown and allow the character to be shown in such a way that she was originally drawn. You know. So. Yeah, and I think they should leave that, that, that alone. <laughs> yeah, because the character deserves that. It uh, does. It, it, hmm. You mentioned the Hammer Horror potential as well, and I, I was reading that myself, and I can just imagine Peter Cushing in the role of Pendragon mm -hmm. with, you know, a suitable actress for a Hammer production, and it was... I think I read it was right around that time. It, it hammer that was like the last gasp, and it was gone yeah. then. After that, which was a shame because it, mm -hmm. if it had been done well, it could have, you know, could could have saved them a little bit of a boost. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just couldn't get the. Was that the one? I think they couldn't get the funding because they couldn't get the rights mm -hmm. for the, the. They wanted the rights for the merchandising, and the original producer wouldn't rel relinquish the rights. Yeah. Yeah, which I kind of can't blame him for, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a shame because you know the character. It's a fantastic character. Um, it's a sexy character, and it, it deserves it deserved to have its you know in place in in movie history, and not be dragged out like it was, and have this production sort of hanging over it and people look at it going i mean it's 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 not a bad movie but it's not a great movie it's like a movie that you'd want to you know you could put on with a bunch of your friends and just just have a laugh you know yeah. um there are flashes of talisa soto playing the role in it that almost like her face and her hair like i said and and certain scenes kind of almost work but um she just doesn't have the right body for it she just doesn't you, you gorgeous girl but it's just she just was not the right casting you know but she couldn't act either oh my god those opening lines i never recovered from those actually <laughs> when she looks at the camera and she goes vlad and i'm like oh, <laughs> really <laughs> it was bad yeah yeah. That was bad. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess All right. That's, uh, that's that's the show, everybody. Hopefully you uh you know enjoyed the movie and enjoyed our, our discussion on the movie. And um we'll see you guys next week when we do the strange and bizarre world of Bad Woman. <laughs> which you saw the trailer at the beginning of the show. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week. Yep. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. That's all, folks.